Hello, and welcome to Cox Reels Tech Tips. We're back, and today we're gonna to be talking about swivels. We're gonna be talking about swivel seals, how to change your seals, and common problems that you have with seals and how to fix them. Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about our tools. You're gonna to need a pair of snap ring pliers. You're gonna need a wrench big enough to take your swivel off. You're gonna need some kind of wrench for taking off your inlet hose, whatever is feeding your reel if you have a spring rewind. You won't need one if you have a uh, motorized or hand crank. And you're gonna need a very specialized tool, a plastic fork. I'll get to this. Okay, and then of course, if you're gonna be replacing your seals, you need a seal kit. We sell the three different seal kits, Viton, Nitrile, and EPDM. In front of you, we have our basic swivel selection. This shows uh, all of the same style swivel that we're gonna be discussing today. There's gonna be another video for a different type of swivel and how to service that one. This particular swivel style is called a banjo swivel. It's a balanced pressure swivel. What it has is it has a body that rotates on two seals. So there's nothing, there's nothing that's trying to pull the swivel apart as you will see in some of the other swivel styles. This is an example of the range that we offer on most of our products. Uh, various materials, various sizes, but the function is all the same and servicing them is all the same. And lucky for us, the causes that could be causing you to have to change your seals is also all the same. And you find this type on all of the spring we run, well, most of the spring we runs, I should say, and also on many of the hand cranks, such as this 100 series Challenger or this 1125 model. They all feature the same banjo style swivel. Uh, the only difference is in the way they're installed on the spring rewind reels. They're installed with a stud like this and on these they're actually installed by one of the ports. Before we get to servicing the swivel and taking the seals out and replacing them, let's talk about some of the main causes of failure that you may be experiencing so we can actually solve the problem and not have the same thing happen again. There are two major causes. Number one is incompatibility. So the fluid that you have inside your product versus the seal that you have. And then number two is side loading on your swivel. Compatibility, okay. There's two websites that we go to when someone calls us up and wants us to check for fluid compatibility, and that is Cole Palmer and eFunda. And you can go there too and check whatever fluid or material you're flowing through and make sure it is highly compatible with the seal that you have. For example, the number one uh, failure in the field that we see is hot water with nitrile. Now, water and nitrile are fine together. They do a great job. However, once you get hot, the nitrile starts to perform badly and you should really be using EPDM. So if you're running hot water, get an EPDM seal and you'll have much less problems and fewer leaks. Let's examine the situation of your reel because most likely if it's not a chemical incompatibility that's causing your seal, it has something to do with the way that the reel is either set up or being used. The number one thing is your inlet line, the line that's going into your reel, must be a flexible hose connection. It's important on these, and it's absolutely critical on this style. If you have a hard line coming to your swivel, you're gonna get leaks. Moreover, people think that just because you have a hose, that that's a flexible connection. If your hose is this long, and it's a stiff single braid hose, that's not very flexible, okay? So it needs to be able to move and it can't be bound up by a rigid or very, very stiff inlet hose. On this type of reel, the inlet hose, on this type and this, this style, this is an 1125, this is a Challenger 100 series, the number one cause of leaks is loading on the swivel. That means you have your hose and then you've zip tied it to the side, or you have your hose and you have it tight pulling this way. That, what that's doing is the whole time is it's pulling on your swivel, it's compressing your seals asymmetrically as it's going around, and it causes premature failure. So if you have a swivel leak, the thing to check is your inlet hose, okay? On this type of reel, if you have a leaking swivel, the number one cause, if it's not chemical, is a lack of a service loop. Just like what we were talking about earlier 
with the biasing, the pulling on it in one direction causing leaks, the same thing can happen here if you don't have a 90 degree flexible loop, okay? If, if your hose has pulled through the hose clamps or you put your own hose on and it's too small for the hose clamps or the person who installed it didn't put this service loop in, you'll end up with this and it'll be making a sharp turn right here. And then every time that reel goes around, it's pulling on your swivel and it's putting unequal loading on your seals and it will cause a leak. It's guaranteed. So once again, the thing to check, flexible inlet connection and number two, loop on a spring rewind. Service loop, very, very important. Okay, now, if you don't have a chemical reaction, you don't have chemical incompatibility and you have your service loops and all is well, it's time to replace your seal just because it's old. Uh, nitrile, you know, give five years or so, it'll start to dry out and it'll crack uh, even if you're not using it. And uh, some other seals, if you're a heavy user on your products, you'll just wear the seals out. Lucky for you, it's very easy to change. Now we're going to go ahead and service this swivel. We're gonna remove it from the reel and we're gonna change out the seals inside. You're gonna begin by removing the inlet hose. I don't have one. The next step is gonna to be to actually remove the swivel. I'll take advantage of Cox Reel's external fluid plath, break my swivel free, and then unscrew it by hand. And then I will leave this connection. You don't have to take that off. Then I'll take my snap ring pliers and I'll remove the snap ring. And then I will push the swivel spool out of the body like so. This you don't have to work with. This is where we're gonna be changing the seals. Now you will see the construction of the swivel is made with two seals one on each side of the hole. So the seals are on the inside. Your seals could be black, they could be brown, they could be green, depending on the material that you have. And on the outside of the seal is a backing ring. The backing ring doesn't seal anything and it doesn't act like a bearing. All it does is stop the seal from extruding between the two parts under really high pressure applications. Okay, your new placement kit comes with new backing rings and new seals. Now, before we continue, it's important to understand how this swivel works. It seals on two sealing surfaces. One of the surfaces is this beautiful smooth inside of the body, and the other surface is the bottom underneath the seal on the spool. These two surfaces must be immaculate and they must be scratch free. So, you have to be very careful not to do any damage to this side or this side. If you have a nice scratch or gouge on the inside, it's not your seals that are causing the leak, it's the scratch. Okay, so that is why we're using a plastic fork and not a screwdriver or a pick or anything metal because this is brass and it's one of the softer metals and if you use a steel screwdriver, you're gonna scratch your brass. Plastic, however, especially a fork, is softer than steel or brass, so you can safely dig your O-ring out with this. What I do is I just break off some of the tongs of the fork so I can get one. And then I use this to dig under the seal, get it up and out, and then you can roll it off like so. The, uh, the backup ring is actually what's called a scarf cut and it's actually a cut plastic ring. Uh, there's a specific way to put these back on and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, and that's how you remove the seal and then you put your new seal on. All seals require a lubricant between the seal and the sealing surface. And different seal materials require different lubricants. Be sure to check the instruction sheets inside your seal kit to make sure you're using the right lube for your seal material. I like to go ahead and apply this lubricant straight to the groove on the spool. Then I install the seal and then I'll put another layer of lube on the outside before I put the swivel together. Okay, so you put your new seal on, you simply roll it on, get it into place, and then you put your new backing ring on. Now your backing ring has a scarf cut, and the scarf cut means they cut it on an angle. And they didn't cut it straight, they kind of cut it on an angle. 
So you just need to make sure that when you put this thing back in there, your scarf cup lines up so that it's a nice uh, consistent thickness. If you stack it the wrong way, it gets all thicker where the scarf cut in and then gets thinner. You don't want that. So just make sure that your two angled surfaces are lined up when you put it back in and you simply put that on, again, the outside of your seal, right? Seal, then backing ring, okay? Once you've replaced it, you put a light amount of lube onto your O-ring. You can put a little bit of lube in there if you want as well. And then you simply push your two halves back together and you reinstall your snap ring and you have changed the seals on your swivel. So we simply reinstall it, put it back, snug it up. Remember, there's no need to over tighten this. It's just holding it in place. When you're putting your inlet assembly back on, remember to hold your swivel while you're tightening your inlet assembly. You don't need to put all that load from your tightening onto the little stud, okay? Let me show you once more on a product that is featuring this same swivel, but it's a different setup because it's a hand crank reel like this or the 1125. On this case, you don't even have to remove the inlet line. You can keep your inlet connection connected. All you have to do is remove your snap ring, slide your parts off. This can still be connected to your inlet line. You can set it aside, change your seals, and put it back together. Easy fix. Okay. Now that we're done with that, I have one more thing to tell you about, and that is a swivel that looks very similar and may come on your 1125, and it looks like this. This is a super swivel. They come in half inch, one inch, and one and a half inch, and even two inch sizes on our product line. And you'll know it's a super swivel because it'll actually say it's stamped on the side. Now this swivel is a purchase swivel. We buy this from Super Swivels and install it on our product. It's a very good swivel. However, we don't have any instructions on how to service this swivel. If you're going to change the seals on this, go to Super Swivels website and I believe they have a video that will show you how to do it on their website. That concludes on how to service our banjo style swivels on our spring and motorized and hand crank models. Thank you for tuning in to our tech tips and be sure to check out our Cox Reels YouTube channel. And as always, have a nice day.